Yeah, let's cross now to our science and technology editor, Tom Clark. He's uh, live at the COVID inquiry. Tom, uh, very good afternoon to you. This is the first uh, conclu set of conclusions from the COVID inquiry. Talk us through the significance. That's right, Well, So, although this is just the first of several, there are, this is the first module of eight, um, at least, that the inquiry is going to hear evidence on and write reports on over what, um, probably the next uh, two years to come, it is perhaps the most significant because many of the failures, flaws, uh, wrong decisions that were made during the course of the pandemic can be drawn back to our failure to adequately prepare um, for one and have the resilience in place to cope with one when it happened. And that was the focus of this module one report. And as you were just saying there, the conclusion of the inquiry is that we did not do enough to prepare. We didn't have the right processes in place. Lots of criticism for the way government organised its pandemic strategy. Effectively, too many people, too many committees, too many government departments with responsibility for these things. No single person in charge, no single uh, committee with oversight of all of it. Also, a lack of communication of what was learned in the exercise that we did. We did plan for the wrong pandemic, she concluded, that being influenza, that was the real emphasis was on a flu pandemic. But even those plans highlighted issues like the impact on social care, for example, people in care homes, and the amount of capacity needs to surge towards that to respond. And it appears that those lessons learned, which, although they weren't directly related to COVID, could easily have made a big difference um, uh, in the pandemic we actually got, but somehow they weren't communicated. So that idea that this, there needs to be a wholesale reform abolishing the existing structure and replacing with others, one of her key recommendations. It wasn't just about civil contingencies planning, while there was a lot of focus on that. She also identified how health inequalities in the run-up to the, the pandemic were some of the highest they'd been. That's those from uh, more disadvantaged groups or those with existing health conditions, um, people from ethnic minorities having inadequate access to health care. Those were as bad as, they were, as, they, uh, um, as they'd been at the time. That proved to be a big um, factor. Public services were also close to or beyond capacity, she concluded.